Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of One Shot, and this review was written for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games, so thank you very much to you Asdin. Please do check out his channel, link is in the top pinned comment. One Shot is a game that was originally created using a modified version of RPG Maker 2003, and it was well received when it arrived to the Steam library six years ago. Will the game hit the bullseye and join your ever-growing Switch library, or should you give it a miss? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. The story sees you guiding Nico, who has awakened in a different world to his own, covered by darkness. He soon finds a PC and meets the Entity, a character who explains why Nico has appeared here and that he is tasked with returning light to the world with the help of the player who is referred to as God. As soon as you start up the game you'll be introduced to a PC, desktop and the Entity who acts as a virtual assistant, as well as being an obscure guide within the one-shot game. It certainly breaks the fourth wall and in a very unique manner. Without getting too much into spoiler territory, it almost acts like a fusion of Eternal Darkness from the GameCube era and Contact on the Nintendo DS. This is a top-down adventure game that is somewhat split into two parts, the desktop and the game itself. As mentioned before, the one-shot software is launched from the desktop of your PC. The desktop has different folders, much like the real thing, and acts much like one too. Folders include wallpapers, themes, music box, and friend icons, which is where all of the collectibles you find on your adventure end up. The entity will interact with the player from time to time in many clever and unnerving ways. Not only will it give you hints within the one-shot game, but it will snap at you and even manipulate your desktop. Then we have the actual one-shot game itself. Nico, the cat-looking child will carry the sun all the way to the tower in order to restore light to the dark-filled world. He becomes aware of your presence and your role in guiding him and it's hard to describe how special and immersive the game becomes the further the story progresses. Nico is a young and brave child who commits to completing his main objective and return home. He speaks with the player directly and includes your valued input on decisions throughout the adventure as well. There are also times when you will ask the player deeper questions about their world and life within it. This clever use of two different characters breaking the fourth wall really works well and helps create a sense of trust and mistrust with both the Entity and Nico. Controlling Nico is simple and effective. There are puzzles which will require him to combine items from the inventory and the player can interact with the desktop UI by moving the cursor with the right stick and double tapping the ZR button, mimicking the use of a mouse on a PC. There are items that Nico will not be able to pick up within the game, and these will require the player to hover the cursor over it and double click to obtain it. These are the collectibles that can be used in the desktop as mentioned earlier. The puzzles are not particularly hard, but they are rewarding when completed, especially when Nico asks for your input. There are some computers scattered about within the world which the entity uses to communicate with Nico directly in order to offer advice. There will be small side quests which help the denizens of this dying world. Most of them are pretty basic but may reward items which aid within other side quests. The main appeal of the game is to what extent the developer made both the entity and Nico so interactive. One part I really did enjoy was when I turned my Nintendo Switch off and was greeted by a distressed Nico who asked what had happened since the world had suddenly gone dark and I wasn't answering. It's a little thing, but it is the moments like this that create a stronger bond with the character. Entity also interacts with you in ways that would make you wonder if the console had been hacked. The main quest to get the light bulb shaped sun up to the tower in many ways takes the back seat. This doesn't make it a boring journey whatsoever, as the game initially gives the players the sense that they are controlling a video game character, but as you reach closer to the end, you really become attached to the characters you meet in this bleak world. Few games have developed an emotion towards its cast quite like this for me and the denizens of the world, recognising Nico as the messiah destined to complete his pilgrimage, really do put the responsibility on the shoulders of the player to do the right thing as you only get one shot. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20 and controls also score 18 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, simple pixelated sprites reminiscent of the 8-bit era are used and this reminded me somewhat of Cave Story, mainly down to the artistic direction and tone of the game. 
The world is dark and bleak, even the city has a somber air to it, plus the desktop has been recreated well, making the experience of interacting with the user interface more realistic. There are some gorgeous illustrations used during cutscenes and some can be found scattered about the world which include themed backgrounds. The text size is decent and I experience no technical issues whilst playing. The soundtrack really complements both the tone and artistic direction of the game, with echoing percussion and slow paced melodies that evoked melancholic emotions to a world absent of light and on the brink of perpetuating darkness. Its eerie and beautiful grim soundtrack reminded me of games such as Fragile Dreams on the Wii, a game which shares many similarities to this one in terms of tone and theme. Visuals, including performance, score 18 out of 20, and audio also scores 18 out of 20. One shot costs £13.49 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. The game can be completed in around 4 hours, although depending on how quick you solve the puzzles and if you try to amass all of the collectibles scattered around the game, this can of course vary somewhat. Some may argue that this is a bit expensive for a short game, but with multiple endings and the very unique experience it offers, I would say the price is pretty fair and value scores 17 out of 20. To conclude, there is no greater feeling than going into a game expecting one thing and truly being blown away by something else entirely. Even after the credits rolled, I kept thinking about the game, although I won't say any more as much as I'd love to, as it is something that must be experienced firsthand. Some of the puzzles may become tedious to some, but it's not a game to speedrun or finish quickly, even with its short runtime. It's a story of two strangers fated to work together to bring light into this decaying world and what a truly fantastic journey it is. One Shot gets a switch up score of 89%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us. Please do check out his channel, as I said there is a link in the top pinned comment. If you are looking for eShop credit to pick this game up or anything else for that matter, don't forget you can use our website switchup.gg. You can get your eShop cards from there and save yourself 10% by using the code SWITCHUP. And there's also a link down there to play Asia if you are looking to import any games. Again, use the link and use the code stated and you can get yourself 5% off of an order. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.